in India, women are used to put red powder, kumkum powder, to advertise their married status. Never try, just do it. L'amour pour l'amour, toujours Love for love, always This is East and West happening. The whole world is one. Wow, feels good. My name is Monique van Herksen. I'm the daughter of Irene van Herksen. Uh, born and raised in Curaçao, the Antilles. Um, I am a lawyer by training, a tax lawyer. But currently I work and live in, um, in Amsterdam. Well, Amsterdam is a delightful hodgepodge of cultures and of city life, but also has a country uh, feel to it. And we live at the waterfront. It's not the Caribbean Sea, but it is still the waterfront. I think I've learned, thanks to my mother, to live with art to have art be a part of your life and not be intimidated by it and, and trust, your, trust your own judgment. Nobody has to judge for you when it gets to art. If you like something, if something resonates with you, um, if you listen to artists, to their story, um, what you read about them or what they will tell you when you ask them yourselves, if you go to an exhibit and you just ask, what is it that motivates you and, and why did you paint this or why did you sculpt this or uh, what is your message? They will be delighted to talk about it. It's just that few people ask them those questions. And my mother used to ask artists those questions, and then she would have them talk to her class, and to students, and to teachers, um, to ask those exact same questions, and to find out that artists are just real people like you and me. But these three artists, Philippe Salonino, uh, Jose Capricorn, and Nelson Carrillo, with her had a special place because they they stood for a time, they stood for a certain sentiment, and they have raw energy that they transformed, and, and a message they really transform in something that you can get out of their paintings and out of their sculptures, if you look at it. If, even if you don't know them, you will probably still pick up some things that you feel yourself when you're looking at their work, that, funny enough, will be what they, they were thinking and what they were trying to convey when they made that piece of art. Hier kan je het ook zien, daar is een gemaskerde figuur. Veel maskers. Ja, die brengt ook een, een vogel met zich mee, ja. een, een magische, ik stop ook veel uh, elementen van de magie in mijn schilderijen. Curaçao is a Caribbean island nation and former Dutch colony located 70 miles north of the Venezuelan coast and is a part of the Lesser Antilles Island Group, also known as the ABCs, Aruba, Bonaire, and Curaçao. Willemstad, the capital, is the economic hub of the region and an international banking center and tax haven. Curaçao's deep, protected ports and proximity to Venezuelan oil reserves have also made the island a vital link to the global petroleum trade. The charm of Curaçao today is typically Caribbean, 
But just below the surface is a long, tortured history based in the transatlantic slave trade of centuries past. Tens of millions of Africans were stolen from their homelands in West and Central Africa and brought by Dutch traders to plantations throughout the Caribbean. The emancipation of the Curaçao slave populations began here at the compound of Landhouse Knip in 1795. The slave insurrection was led by one of Curaçao's most revered national heroes, Tula. But it would take another 70 years, not until 1863, for the abolition of slavery in the Antilles to be complete. Despite newly found freedom, the wounds inflicted on the slave populations would prove to be deep and long-lasting. Y'all ready for this? During the 60s, economic disparity between blacks and the Dutch colonial powers persisted in Curaçao. As the civil rights movement was evolving in the U.S., anti-colonial transformations were simultaneously sweeping the globe, and violent eruptions such as the one on May 30th, 1969 in Willemstad were common. I think my, my mother specifically endorsed um, using art as a bridge to overcome the sense of discrimination, to overcome the sense, the feeling of inferiority, with total, totally misplaced inferiority um, that's, that's still rampant some, you know, somehow. Yeah, clearly, clearly art can build that bridge, clearly. There's, there was never a doubt about, about that in her mind, and there's none in my I, same way. I think Antillian art, um, and, and it's, I mean, I don't think you can, people have tried to define Antillian art, but there's no such definition at this point. What I like about what we see in the Antillian art is we see that it's definitely getting strong influences from the Americas and from Europe. Art is definitely leaving the traditional African heritage pictures behind and is developing in something totally different. And if you see how powerful um, art is and if you, if you allow yourself to express to express what you can do and make things and get what you think and get it out in, in material or, or on, a, um, on a canvas, um, that message is, is strong and respected and you, a lot of, yeah, you can redeem yourself that way because of that dialogue, which, which is something that the Antilles really fosters. You know, people, people look at the United States, they look at Latin America, they feel European, and so there's this dialogue, it's all there. Um, and these artists have all these nationalities and all these aspects in their art and as long as we all continue to talk with each other and as long as, you know, and it doesn't matter what religion or what culture or whatever, just talk and look and enjoy the same things. To be able to express something beautiful is also an achievement. So whenever I made this sculpture for Curaçao, I'm glad but then I continue. It's like um, there is some stream of energy that tells me don't stop. I think that art is a living piece. In a painting or in a sculpture, there is a kind of vibration and a kind of magic. Not magic in that way, but it's a, a, a living thing. It's a research of life. What I now put in a in my work. Love is my master. Love is the one doing the work. And I, as a very limited person, love to serve love. It's uh, August 10th of 2007, and uh, Jose just told me that Today, it's the 80th birthday of Alice Juliana in Curaçao. Brothers and sisters, writers, I'm very happy to be here am among you. And I'm thankful to this organization for the opportunity to represent the poetry of my country. My name is Alice Juliana. I am from Curaçao, one of the six islands of the Netherlands Antilles. Our native language on Aruba, Curaçao and Bonaire is Papiamento. But what we do when we speak Papiamento, is to set the sounds to a musical cadence, thus creating Papiamento's typical rhythm. In fact, rhythm dominates so much that at times the meaning of words is not important. For instance, our poems that can be compared with drum beats. 
We all know about the talking dreams of Africa. Kanta kuiru kajinti kanta kanta kuiru kajinti kanta kuiru kanta eva milanta eva milanta eva milanta kanta kuiru kajinti kanta kuiru no punta pa ki Michelanta Michelanta Michelanta. And I like very much his drawings because he always has in his drawings something like the slave is camouflage and uh, shows himself differently to the world. So. Um, there we are already in Curaçao and that's why we are sitting here because yeah. uh, everybody has something to do with Curaçao. And what I wanted to ask you and I wanted to start with Nelson is um, did you know Philip or did you know uh, uh, Jose already before today? Yes. Yeah? Yes, I think I met Jose 15 years ago. I don't know, or 10 years ago, we had a, we had a exhibition together, uh, some place in Ukraine for an exhibition. And... Um, you don't know me. So don't you know. <laughs> <laughs> I met when I had my first exhibition in uh, Curso. Uh -huh. And we met each other at Gallery 86 on the stairs, and, and, and it, it, it matched. Yeah, we had a good time together. Nelson has an elegance to him and to his work. But he's got this strong pride in his work. You can, you know, you, he, any inferiority you would possibly have from a cultural perspective, his pride will just say like, no, you know, be proud, you know, look at your posture, look at your heritage, look at what you're delivering and bringing. Um, very powerful, powerful, elegant artist, definitely. Hello, come on in, just have a look. Nelson Carrillo was born in Curaçao and emigrated to Holland as a boy in the 60s. His struggle for identity growing up in all-white schools forms the foundation of his work as a sculptor today. He is committed to his African heritage, Antillean sensibilities, and the multiculturalism of Holland today. This is my studio. This is uh, the place. This is my church. This is uh, what's everything, where everything is happening. And Mostly I'm here during the day and walk and try to be creative. This is one of my uh, main piece. I mean, it's the, the fool's parade, parading fools. As, uh, the artist as the observer, unveiling the, the mask from uh, the politicians or, or the church leaders. And I use poetry, or you can also say those are the the fixing lies that uh, that coming out of the mouth of the politicians. I'm not a politician, I'm just the artist. <laughs> okay. Yeah, this is actually uh, touched by the goal. It's uh, it's an archer that aim, it's not aiming at the, at the boost target, but it's aiming at a higher goal. So actually what they say is the, 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 the road to the, to the goal is more important than the goal itself. So that's actually the, the theme and the symbolism of, of the Olympic Games is also the symbolism that I like to express in this uh, sculpture. In the, in the Olympics from Athens, every country had its own participation for the, for the artists. So I was participating for Holland. Here I have my golden sculpture. I call it golden. It's my icon. It, those are my heroes. It's, it's, it's still, it's, the title of it is uh, Railroad to Heaven. Actually, it deals with the problems of the refugees the, who are um, having some bad times reaching Fort Europe. And actually, a lot of people get killed during the trip to, to, uh, to heaven. That's why I call it Railroad to Heaven. Here in Amsterdam, you meet a lot of those people who had made this very difficult trip to come here. And actually, those are my heroes. You see them on the street, you talk with them, but people see them as problem but I see it as my heroes because what those people um, achieve and what they went through it's 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 unbelievable and so when I look at them I don't see them as problems but uh, they can achieve more than I did you see so th that's why I call, I call this uh, it's Via Dolorosa Railroad to, Railroad to Heaven it's a modern Via Dolorosa
this is my workshop, this is where I do the working, this is where I do the welding, this is where I do the hammering, this is where I do all the craftsmanship. And this is one piece, I call it Waiting for God. And if you sit down and you can read this, I never promise you a rose garden. This piece is about fatalism, it's about fear, creating fear by fear itself. What we have to do is tearing down those, those walls. Well, actually this piece is designed for a, for a place outside that people can sit and think about certain things, right? Um, and but putting it outside, it has to be double, double this big. And I hope I can do it. <laughs> Okay, and um, it's, it's actually a spiritual place where you can sit and actually if you look up upstairs, it's like looking up the church towers and some people want to tear them down and some people want to make them bigger. So that's the question that, that, that I ask in my sculpture. It's very important. It's one of my most important pieces that I make. It has to do a lot with my uh, growing older. <laughs> Thinking about what life is. This sculpture, the name of this sculpture, the title of this sculpture is Identity Who Cares. It's about identity. And if you travel in the Caribbean or South America, you're gonna see a lot of busts from the, from the conquistadores. And for me, I wanted to demonize this, this, this bust. And it's, this sculpture is very important for me because it's the, the inner feeling. You have to, you have to feel the, 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 the I call it the fourth, fourth dimension in, the, in, in my sculptures. There's the demonizing, the, the power of, of, of the, 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 the ne negative forces coming out of this, uh, this sculpture. Um, somebody told me that I, I must have been very angry when I was making this. But I'm always, always very scary about things like identity because when you start about identity, you are start already start building walls again, you know, ex ex exercise certain groups from other groups. So I want to go beyond those walls. So this is a theme that's very much in my, 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 my sculpture, in my, my, yeah, all of my sculptures. Um, so it's a very important piece for me, this one. This piece on the wall is, uh, I call it me, myself and I, it's about myself. Whenever I don't have inspirations, I make some small pieces and sometimes bigger pieces for my, I, I, I call it for my unconsciousness. You see a lot of screaming in it, screaming, it's screaming from inside. Um, it has a lot to do with my youth. There's so many things I want to say, but I couldn't say because I'm not a talker. I'm, you know, I, I want to be creative. It's not for exhibitions or something, it's just for, my, for myself. So whenever I make it, I put it on the wall, it's okay, I, I, I gave it a place so I can continue with uh, other themes or other titles in my work. It reminds me where I came from and it also reminds me what I missed because I came so young here in, in, in Holland. I was very glad when I arrived in Holland. I'm very glad I had, I had everything I got here in Holland. But it's also, everything has its opposite, right? So um, whatever I achieved here, I didn't you know, achieve in Curaçao. Part of me that, that stayed in Curaçao and didn't de develop. And this part, when I came here, did develop itself, but I miss, I miss this part. And sometimes it's colli colliding myself, so, and the scream, and it's coming out, and then I make some small pieces and then put it there. The energy you, you put in your sculpture, people will sense it, they feel it. So that's why it has this fourth dimension. <laughs> you understand what I mean? And did you know? Uh... And Jose, actually, that is the first artist that was mentioned when I arrived in Curaçao and that was 21 years ago. Yeah. Yes. So... And why was it mentioned to Curaçao? Why in a very, very good uh, manner? Because uh, I was told about the artist Jose Capricorn that actually was uh, giving his work. Se when selling his work, giving the money to charity. That's how I heard of you. So that... Yeah. Because he had another work. He was involved with politics. 
Uh, so, well, that was impressive to me. Mm. Yes. And well. bon, he is, now that I know a little better, he is like a curious old godfather. Yes. Oh. <laughs> Thank you. Yes. Yes, yes. Jose is like the most modest person you'll you'll ever run into. I think he um, he's soft spoken and and he he's very thoughtful. He's almost saying more to his canvas than he will say in person. You know, it'll 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 take a long time before you pull it you pry it out of him. But his his influence is from Europe and from from Brazil and. And the Antilles. He definitely knows the Antilles the way it was. We, we call it uh, the Curacao Antiaia, you know, of way back when. And he, he definitely has that in his pictures, which is why we're all so sentimental about his work. Jose Maria Capricorn is one of the Antilles' best known painters. His work hangs in galleries throughout Europe and the Caribbean. Although he lives in Holland today, he is a global traveler born and raised in Curaçao, his soul is never far from his island homeland, its hope and future. I am an artist, I am a painter. Um, I started uh, as um, a ceramic decorator uh, in the 50s. I started as a boy from 15. I worked in a studio who makes ceramics. Uh, that was in Curso. For me, um, Curso was a little paradise when I was a boy. A little paradise, but the um, essential problem was there was not enough work. So I have had to leave Curso. The social problems that I saw as well in Curso, in Brazil, and here I put them also in my work. Uh, but not only that, I saw, of course, in, in Brazil, I saw a very um, problematic things uh, as social problems, children who were dying on the street, very poor people, very, very poor people. Uh, I have the experience because uh, I worked for many years in this uh, field. I spoke with uh, many artists, Curso artists, uh, also uh, with uh, Carrillo and San Lino about uh, our work, our situation. But now we are together to speak in extension about our work as artists. Uh, and in the years, the, they both go up to a, a big artist, great artist uh, from the Antilles. Yeah. Well, first, what I can tell you is that I am constantly saying thank you. I feel privileged. I feel privileged to be here. I feel privileged in, in the work I'm doing because I have really great love for it. I don't have to compromise. I don't have to lie. I don't have sense of, of work or vacation. It's, it's the life. I have great children. I have great people around me. I have no complaint. I have no complaint whatsoever. I, as a very limited person, love to serve love. It is a big part of my life. And, and I enjoy daily the surprises of it. But mostly, this is a positive place where a lot of ritual happen, a lot of awakening, a lot of beautiful spirit, a lot of healing. This is Curaçao. Philippe Zanolino is a surrealist. His work, random and perceptive. His paintings and sculptures embody an ethic of universal love. The remnants of this wooden sculpture are about to be burned in a personal artistic ritual. To Philippe, the divine flows through him to inspire creation. 
that he is only instrumental in the genesis of his work. I'll tell you what's important is that there is no waste. This is the, the complementaire of the sculpture. So once the sculpture is separated from the, the tree, that's what you have left. And now to honor it, we are going to burn it. Fire, it seems like destruction, but fire is life. Nothing will work without fire. You put it on top and let it rain, so you make a monster. Zanolino has lived on Curaçao for most of his adult life. His children speak Papiamentu, French, Dutch, and English. Wait, let me do something. I don't want to be on a field. He came to Curaçao 25 years ago from his native France and has been assimilated by Antillean culture. Like Curaçao itself, Zanolino is a hybridization of creative spirit and traditions. This was a conceptual piece about slavery. In this machine on my back, in the love machine, you can recognize one face made of a half that's black and a half that's white. And together, they breathe by the same nose and kiss by the same mouth. Together, they fly. One helps the other, becoming more beautiful. Reality has no color. Reality has no gender. Love is universal and present in all beings and everything. Every huge worldwide or individual story will bring you one step nearer from the truth. There has been a lot of sacrifices involved in the short-term history of Curaçao. Even so, I know at the spirit level there is forgiveness. Still, in day-to-day -day life, I mean, you still can feel the old history being reenacted. I'm right now in Curso, um, let's say, by uh, Philip's house. And we, we just take a take tonight because Philip is all, also one of the persons that really believe in this music. Uh, right now, I'm gonna, to, I'm gonna play some real spiritual song. You can, uh, you have also the chance to enjoy the European influence in those times, you know, from the beginning till how the music is uh, become till now. I just want to invite you to sit down, relax, and enjoy this bint. It's just the bint man with you. And um, of course, my name is Russell Soriano. Okay, this is real spiritual message. Take it from your heart. Absolute luxury and comfort, you know, that money cannot buy. I think there is more dimension that we don't understand. There were most probably a lot of healing involved at many levels, and it is a blessing to witness it. Russell's music, what was, going, what was it doing to you? Well, first, uh, this is intellectual, I think, wow, man, it is good to be human. You know, wow, we can do that. If I would be God, I would be proud of this man.
The benta is an ancient slave musical instrument whose origins date back as early as the 18th century. Although the instrument is indigenous to the Antilles, its roots lay somewhere between Central Africa and the Caribbean. The benta has played a vital spiritual and creative role in Antillean cultural history. But significantly, it was always considered an instrument of defiance. The Dutch slave masters were suspicious of the instrument's eerie tonality and did all they could to ban its use. It was used as a kind of aboriginal and musical Morse code, akin to the African talking drum. Its use enabled slaves to communicate amongst themselves without their overlord's knowledge. Although few know how to play it today, the benta remains a powerful symbol of Antillean emancipation and national pride. Russell is fantastic. He, like every true and honest artist, go and reach the inside with something very essential, some, something that's vital. It is maybe a little difficult to express, but there is vital pleasure. Like, without it, it will be only death. And he makes that vitality resonate. I believe to become rich, there are yeah. two steps necessary. First, you, you should be uprooted from all security. So it is, it is really a gift if you can move out of your culture, out of your language, out of your security. And as well, if you find yourself with a complete different set of rules, then the, the, the co apparent confrontation will make you a rich man. So it is good if you are from Curaçao to go 10 years in Europe, for example, and if you are European, go live 10 years in Curaçao. Yes. After a few years living in and working in uh, Brazil and Rio de Janeiro, I uh, immigrated to Holland. I came in March 53. I lived near the Vandal Park, and uh, every day I went to the Vandal Park, walking the Vandal Park, and uh, it was for me a total other world. Uh, Europe was. In that time, Amsterdam was not like it's now. It was an old-fashioned uh, city. Yeah? Uh, you will see it back in my paintings, in my first uh, painting. Uh, this is, uh, f uh, for me, a very important uh, painting because it's, uh, it uh, is the, my arrival in Holland. Yeah? And this tree represents the Vondel Park. And in March, when I came here, it was very dark and rainy. And this is the symbol of the rainy uh, uh, atmosphere in Holland. But here uh, you will see the birds and all those, the nature in the Vondel Park. And in in Holland, on the other side, uh, uh, the green parts represent uh, the green um, landscape in Holland. And uh, in Amsterdam, I went to uh, the school uh, school for painting. Yeah? 
for painting and decorations. After I finished that uh, courses, I went to the school for graphic arts. 68, I was married and we went back to Curaçao. We came in a country with a lot of social problems. By the mid-60s, the prosperity that came with Royal Dutch Shell's petroleum refinery had a mixed impact on the people of Curaçao. Although petrodollars meant jobs for the island's population, more often foreign workers were brought in rather than employing locals. As profits were rarely used to uplift the masses, social eruptions have been inevitable. Slavery had only been abolished for barely a century before a new institution of economic disparity would replace it, oil. The problem is the problem, a historical colonial problem, because the Dutch in the past who colonized the islands, they were not interested in, in culture, they were interested in, in business, in economics. And later on, the um, Curso intellectuals who came here to study, they gave them here in, in Holland, in the structure, the same way of thinking. Now our, our polit politicians still have the, that way of thinking. They think only in uh, business and in social problems, but not in cultural. Uh, education, you see, that's, uh, that's a very difficult problem. Jose Capricorn returned to Curaçao to teach art in 1968. He wanted to be a part of the new Antillian social consciousness movement. During this time, he met a Dutch art teacher named Irena van Herksen, and they began a lifelong arts education collaboration. Irena came as a young uh, teacher, and she uh, was very um, interesting to teach young people in Curso, teach art, you know. But she was very, how would they call it uh, in English, like idealistic, eh? you know, it was, she was very idealistic. Eh? That means that you have love for uh, your own work and f for others. Eh? Oh yes, um, I have this old book here, Cultural Mosaic van de Nederlandse Antillen, and that is the copy uh, used very much, as you can see, by uh, uh, the mother of Monique, by Irene van Herksen, and she is, the, in fact, also the mother of this project that we are sitting here yes. together today. Uh, what you have there is a Dutch woman who taught art. It is a wonderful opportunity, and, and we really thank Irene, because she is here. Uh, she was a very open-minded person, involved personally with art, and, and she put many groups and children, many, many children in contact with art, many times their first contact. So this is a bit as using us all like instrument for her last artwork. She was a very strong, Woman. She was a mama baranga. She was very dedicated in art. She really felt that art could teach children very much about life and that it could take you beyond boundaries. I want to say that Irene is one of the um, uh, examples what I was talking about. That you can, on Curso or that island, you can find the spirit you can find the people who brings a human being together. That is what I think uh, is the important thing that uh, she, Irene, has showed with her work. She felt that they were all very much uh, representative of, of their time and their experiences, and particularly of the Antilles. To her, they, these three men um, personify the, the, the cultural heritage of the Antilles, of, of Curaçao, of how she experienced it and how she, she saw it and how she was inspired to help children to, and, and teachers to work with art and creativity. The, 
this is an edge. Uh, I make a lot of etching, and this is a etching, yeah, as a, a play, yeah. People are playing a role, yeah? and as you can see, this figure has. A, she asks herself, "Is this figure? Is it a human being or is it a machine?" Yeah. Uh, this is abstract work. And I started to uh, make this kind of abstract uh, works when our son died. Eh? Here in, in this kind of work, it's a research for myself. What is human being? Eh? Eh? What is life? Eh? I, I wanted to know what's uh, a human being between life and death, uh, to understand life, uh, to understand what we are doing here in this, uh, on this work. I have, I have a lot of abstract work, but I only show you this one. Eh? It, is an, an, it is an toneel stuk, as it were, van veranderingen. Dus uh, hij is bezig Eigenlijk dus een, 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 een konijn, in dit geval, of een dier, een levend we wezen, te veranderen. En dan zie je hier dus, eh, als het ware, die andere figuur, dus de vrouwelijke figuur, is ook bezig, als het ware, de situatie te scheppen eh, om een verandering tot stand te brengen. Je ziet hier ook dus, als het ware, eh, ook... Als het ware stukken van machines. Hè? En daar heeft hij dat ook om een andere situatie als het ware te scheppen. Het is een. een, 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 een hoe heet het? het zijn veranderingen. Ik heb telkens veranderingen proberen uh, weer te geven in mijn schilderij. Het, het gaat continu om dingen en situaties die veranderen. Hè? Dus de, my mother found it very important to reach out to people who had a message but maybe weren't communicating that message in a way audible to all. Um, that's, she was a teacher. She, I mean, she was a teacher by heart and she loved educating and she loved transferring messages and if it wasn't heard one way then she said well then we'll have to somehow get it heard another way and she tried to get the messages that these artists were conveying to the people to children to to people outside of the Antilles to people there um, she gave a lot of art history classes and taught people to look um, and I think to her, it was very important to be a good person as to these three artists to, to try to get the messages across. It's all about communication, I guess. Despite the march of time and technology, modern day Amsterdam remains a modest yet sophisticated European capital. The city is a focal point of global cooperation, multiculturalism, tolerance, and environmentally driven politics. Despite the enviable and rational pace of the Dutch capital, Beneath the surface, demons of racism continue to haunt the city that Anne Frank called home. In 1983, an Antillian immigrant teenager was violently murdered in a racial attack. A statue was commissioned in memory of Kerwin Downmeyer that sits in the heart of Amsterdam's Vondelpark as a community symbol of defiance in the face of intolerance. Throughout Amsterdam, public sculptures are common, but who and what they represent are often obscured by time. Although the tragedy of Kerwin's murder has faded, Nelson Carrillo's sculpture remains firmly planted in the consciousness of the city and the Antillian community. Here we are in, uh, in the Vondel Park in Amsterdam. And uh, right now we're seeing the Mama Baranka. That's uh, Mother Rock monument. The universal theme is uh, Mother Earth, but in Curaçao, because Curaçao is a rock island, we call it Mother Rock. It's also the goddess, Mother Rock is the main goddess in uh, Afro um, heritage, um, what the slave uh, took to the Caribbean. 
Gavin Daimeo was killed in 1983 and this monument was placed here in the Park in 1984. This is uh, a commemoration from uh, Kevin Daimeyer, but it's also against uh, racial killings and it's also uh, a symbol uh, for the future of Amsterdam, who, what is a more and more multi-ethnic uh, community. The monument was placed on 20 August, August, so every year on the same date, there's a big demonstration from the Dam Square to the Fondel Park. Vandaag willen wij Kevin Dood herdenking met de onthulling van dit monument symboliseren Moeder Aarde. Inhoudende standvastigheid, vruchtbaarheid, stabiliteit en eeuwigheid. My first sculpture that I made, the first one that I made was Mama Baranka. So I felt that Curacao didn't belong in Holland because they, they didn't know anything from my country here. So I said, the only thing I can do is plant Curacao here so in the front park. park. In the front no, park. In the front park. So it's not, he doesn't, she doesn't have any feet. She's just like poof. Yeah. Put it in the front park because she belongs here. Sometimes art is not also always about reaction. Sometimes you you like to make things just out of your feeling. Uh -uh. So the mother, the, the the mother, what is very important in in our culture, the the, the strong mother who, who raise the children because the father, uh, due to the economic situation in Curaçao, they had to travel. So the mother was mother, mother and father, and it was so so strong a symbolism. I say, okay, then let's put the roots in, in, in the middle of Amsterdam, in the Fonda Park. So that's, it's, it's a reaction. It's a, I call it a reaction monument. When I came here 11 years old, I left a part of me in Curaçao. And a part of me was here in, 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 in Holland. So when I was living in Holland, I, I'm an observer. When I go to Curaçao, I'm an observer. And in my art, I also am an observer, but that's very um, important in my art. I, I'm always the observer. And now I know that I'm also participating, but in, in, in the beginning I was the observer. And when I met him, I feel the same. He was from French and, and, and he was in Curaçao. And he, has a, he had a, this dedication for art. This painting you see in my back gave me one of the very big, big symbols in my work. Two weeks before it was accomplished, a voice told me when I was in Italy doing another work, God speaks English. Bon, it was funny, but I could not make no sense out of it. So two weeks later, then I'm doing that work. And actually that work is just the beginning. So I work in a surrealist way so that you can control. In this case, it's done with rollers. So you can see all, all different spots and it goes very fast. I mean, this will take 10 seconds maximum. So you see all this is the same move from the same roller. Then, of course, I recognize all the little dogs there more like a wolf, and he is very precise with the, with the eyes and the, all the, the three-quarter position and the tail and the legs. If you don't have face, you will never believe these come from nowhere. Then I say, oh, oh, I cannot touch that painting no more. Even so, it's just the beginning. You can fight for a while and speak of coincidences, but when that happens in every work, then there is no more coincidences, no more luck, no more bad luck. Just, it comes, it is, as simple as that. And art shows it. It's not only my work, not only me. Actually, I can show it in all the, the, the artists that did not imitate. All the ones that went to get these things out of them, then 
with that purity, then the universe will use you for its own work. And then it shows. So in every work of real artists, I can show you the part where the art took over from the artist. Now this is a perfect example. The art took over from the artist. Then, like all these paintings in the back, I have the, the, the sign, the title, and I could, Dog, D-O-G. And I said, oh, wow, this was like a lightning, just like a lightning. God speaks English. Dog, God, as a symbol. I'm a God man, so there is, you know, it's just symbolic. But every time, and you will see, so many of my works have a dog presence. It's just a symbol for the divine creative power. It took me three years to wonder, should I speak or not? And I do now. So, another thing I would like to say that's very important is that this, the white you see, is the canvas. It is white because it is prepared white, but it's not painted. So if you want, or what I can do, or what can be done through me, is here, and this is, is a hole, is nothing. So there you have the spiritual, there you have the physical. One reveal the other. Bon. God speaks English. There is a, a, a great teaching as well, a practical teaching in that work, is that you will not be able to see anything unless you frame it. For, it's very important. For example, imagine a pure blue sky. And I tell you, in five minutes time, you're going to be bored to death. But if there is one little black cloud passing by, and even more fortunately, the sun is going to go sweet and send, you know, beautiful rays. Then this little cloud is going to frame the whole sky so that you are able to see the whole sky. It's the same in your life. If you want perspective, you have to frame. to express as well your own culture but also the universal feelings that you want to express uh, uh, with uh, all your possibilities uh, and uh, what we have what we feel is that from that island we got a lot of inspiration. Why? Because it's an island, uh, a concentration of several um, cultures, uh, Dutch culture, uh, Arab culture, culture from Asia, uh, culture from Africa. It comes together on that island. So we are accustomed or accustomed to, to get all those uh, inspirations from a lot of countries and we express ourselves in the form what you can see now. Uh, a problem is that I think when one comes from Europe in the first uh, place they can't uh, feel what we are doing. You see, it's for, for, for instance, for a journalist to come to Curaçao to write about the art from uh, Curaçao, they, they can't give it a name. I think that this conversation opens a field, an eye for many people who can't understand 
art artist from Kyushu. The title of this monument is Karkadonan uh, Jaleu. It's actually, if you translate it in English, it's uh, carriers from afar. And it's actually about human beings traveling and carrying their richness wherever they go. And they like to show it to the world. When I sculpture, I have a goal. And whatever is coming to my part, I will take it but I don't lay back. You want to conquer the space. I mean, it's, uh, that's why I'm always talking about the power of sculpture. You know, the bigger and the stronger, and then you have it in a big space, and then you say, gosh, it's, it's there. So when I make a sculpture there, I'm not satisfied. I want to make it big, but it's... So the energy is coming, and uh, the frustrations are coming inside. From uh, Mother Earth, the energy from Mother Earth, but going to the, the universe. So in this position, you can do all of the dances. From this, dance, jump, jump. And it's very, very strong. In the African dance, there's a lot of inner space. It's a lot about going inside. And in the European dance, it's a lot about going outside. You understand? So, you actually you see in the <laughs> sculpture art, the, the, they put the sculpture on pedestals. It has to go up, it has to go outside. It's the same as a classical dance. But in the African art, it's about Mother Earth, so it's inside. It's the feeling inside, it's the ancestors, it's the spiritual inside. So by mixing those two, um, very powerful spirit, it's, I think it brings for me a, a, a different kind of uh, expression. It's a general thing too of the Caribbean, to look for the roots. Of course, because there, is, there has been a forced displacement. So everybody wants to know, but where do I come from? In this case, so already travelers don't have attachment. This is serious positive value. And the load they have on their head is just the minimal things to go that you still remember a little. Because when you don't remember at all, then you lose it all. But you don't need too much. Just enough. The Otto Plain is located on the north side of Curaçao and was once home to several Dutch West Indies Company slave plantations. It's an austere and striking desert landscape. The rare beauty and isolation of the plateau is energized by its full exposure to the Caribbean Sea and the southern fringes of the region's hurricane belt sea caves plunge deep into the basalt rock of the island. The Otto Caves were originally inhabited by Arawak Indians, the indigenous tribe of the Antilles. Of the beauty of Curaçao is that in a very short time you can find yourself in the middle of nowhere. Actually, my master had a kind of a joke about nowhere. I say it is not nowhere, it is now, here. Now we are in the middle of the Atto Flats, and especially in this power center. Don't forget Curaçao is a very, very strong spiritual place. Then I have two brothers, Yubi and Tirzo, that make the installation that you will witness around. In subsequent eras, the caves also served as a practical refuge for slaves who escaped from the landhouse plantations. To this day, Atto is also the site where voodoo rituals continue. Look, it is very simple. The creator loves to create. So you see, when you do a, a painting or a sculpture, it's a very small thing. 
Nevertheless, the quality of creation in it is the same as creating an entire universe. So every time there is an artwork created, the, the quality of creation is as intense. Don't forget that when you don't imitate, then there is something that did not exist. There is something a little new. Now we are going to, to visit a place where you will actually see and hear Curacao breathing. We are reaching that in five minutes. We are now at Boca Tabla, ready to go into love in action. This could appear like a conflict, but the land and the sea will be eternal lovers. Let's go for it. Here, yeah. you're, you're right in it. This is love. For an artist, it is so very rich. Like, I believe where there is disease, you need medicine, and we are we are receptive to it. You know. So there are so many confused souls that need witnessing of of beauty and truth just to be able to go a little further. This is the land where, where you pay your rent with the heart. That explains why so many people come and go, because they can pay the rent for a while with the money, but not with the heart. It's a world in itself, and it's totally satisfying. I love Curacao. And I hope one day I can give back even a little of all what it gave me. Again, Mas? Okay. We are free. We are free. La libertad! I think that all together we have a beautiful story. Yes, that there is a unity with the three of us. Now I think they are gentle people. They are not working for provocation. They are working with hope. They are working for the positive. They have become wise enough to find the positive no matter what. I think this is a very strong common point for the three of us. I love you, Nelson. I love you, José. In French, you have this, this uh, sentence that says, se jeter à l'eau, which means to throw oneself in the water. And that shows your determination toward which direction really you want to go. When you jump in the water, you are saying, there, I am going. And because love went in the water, I go in the water. L'amour pour l'amour, toujours. Love pour love, always.